Okay, I'm going to dive into this painting now and uh, start working on this sky area. Now you can see that I've sketched in very lightly where these cliffs are going to go and where the trees are right here. So the sky is a relatively small area that's up in here, but I'm allowing for a few clouds to come in. Now I'm going to create the gray of the clouds by allowing the pigments to mix on my paper rather than on the palette. So I'm going to mix just a little bit of yellow out here in this well, this mixing well, and I'm going to come over here and pick up a little bit of cadmium red light, and the two together of course will create an orange. So now I'm going to pick up some ultramarine blue over here and leave it in this well out here, and mix a good pile of that out here. There we go. Now I got some fresh paint. I want a little bit thinner glaze of that, so I'll bring a little bit over here. Mix a little bit of water with that. Now I've got a thin glaze of blue, and I've got some yellow and some red. Now lay some, some uh, color up in here. First I need my water. I want to wet this whole sky area. So I'll do that right now using this hockey brush. It's a big old fat uh, brush that holds a lot of water and I'm just gonna not really care too much about where this water goes but I am going to define these edges right up against the edge of this cliff the reason for that is I'm going to have a real tight edge right up there where the sky is darker and the cliffs are lighter up at the top so I got to be careful about what I'm doing there now I'll use um, my smaller brush and I'm going to define this edge. Now this is very, very light, so I don't have to worry about it too much. But I'm going to let it run backwards now, or downhill this way, into that sky area. Now you can't see much color, but I'm creating a bead here, and that will define this edge as it comes up. Alrighty. Now let's pick up some yellow, and in this cloud area right up in here, I'm going to drop some of that and let it run out here a little bit, and just let it run around and do its thing. Now I'm going to let this blue all run back into here. I think I'll have a little bit more yellow right along this edge, and let those two come together, which will make kind of a green kind of a greenish gray, but notice how everything is staying right here against this edge because that's where the water is. And now as long as the water's running back into the other water, it'll just make a nice soft edge. But as I come up here and uh, put some more color into this area, okay, I'm adding some of my cadmium red light. And this is 300 pound arches paper, so it's pretty darn, pretty darn thick. And um, I'm just going to let that run down in here. And then let some of this color run up into here a little more. Fun, 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 fun. Real loose, real loose. Now I'll let that mingle together. I'll let this water run back down into that again. Pick up a little bit of yellow and run through there. And I'm kind of letting it flow down at an angle up against this edge now. I'm leaving a, a white area up in here. I'll have the blue of the sky come down. It'll be the left edge of this cloud. And that cloud will be an important shape to help me define um, these areas. Okay, if we have too much, uh, we can take a thirsty brush like this, okay? It's a nice big brush, and without any water on it at all, we can run it along in here and it'll pick up the pigment along that edge. Watercolor is, is really a matter of learning what the water's going to do, and semi controlling it. I say semi because it really does its own thing a lot of the times, but we don't want happy accidents. 
we really don't want any accidents. We want we want it to do a, what uh, what we need it to do. And if we understand watercolor, we can make that work. I'm just going to clean this edge along the top and down here. And now this is starting to settle down into the paper. What I want to do now is I want to take a little bit of my blue, this thinner glaze of blue that we have up here uh, in this area. And I'm going to make some grays where this cloud shadow is going to be over here. And I'll just let this pigment mingle on the paper so I can see some reds, I can see some yellows, and I can see some blue. But while this is wet, I can, I can do this by allowing these pigments to mingle right there. And that will just make a luscious, a luscious area right in here. And I'll let these pigments mingle down in here as well a little bit as I bring some blue down in this area. And we see that we've kind of got some oranges and yellows, but we still have some strong grays as these pigments combine. Now on this back side of this cliff, I'm going to bring some darker blues, just a little bit more red, and define a little harder edge where it comes up and meets this little point where that cliff sticks up. I want that to be kind of defined. And this really ragged brush that I'm using allows me to have some uh, not straight edges, but you can see how funny that is. Well, I like that because it helps me to, to uh, have some more random shapes. But I want this dark to come right down against this edge. And what I'm doing now is I'm defining uh, where a light will come up against that dark sky. Okay, and this pigment will just mingle together in a very, very nice way. Now, while it's doing that, and while I'm messing with this uh, over on this side, this, what I, I call a gray, but it's really allowing these, these three pigments to mingle together. While that's doing that, the rest of this is drying around here. And I'm going to grab some of my ultramarine blue only I am picking up a really heavy load of this you can see uh, down in here it's a really heavy load and I'm going to create the blue of the sky and this will be the gray of a cloud but I'll have some light on this area so I'm going to get this blue up in here and form the edge of this cloud and I like this raggedy brush because it gives me these really fun edges and I'll bring it in over on this back side of it as well. And create some fun cloud shapes over there too. And then I'll keep bringing this blue down into this area. Again, I'm using this brush to create these ragged edges. I want a random edge around these clouds and bring my blue up in here. This will be kind of covered by these branches, but it'll st you'll still see that blue come through. A little bit of light up in there. And now I'm going to grab just a little bit more and come into this area down in here and create some blue shapes. which it, once again will be the blue of the sky. And we'll have that come up here and in. But we're going to have these shapes flow down into the back of this, these cliffs that are back here. This will flow right up to the edge and stop. See how I'm forming the, the light edge of this cliff by these shapes where they stop. And I'm not going to have a flow that comes in and, and it helps to design the composition as these clouds move in. I'll touch a few little down in here where it breaks through the, the clouds a little bit. And once again, I'm using the corner of this really ragged brush to do this. 
to create some interesting shapes. And while this is still moist and wet, these shapes are not going to be this hard, but they're going to soften up as they move back. this is coming and moving together all right now I'm pretty much done with that I've got to um, not mess with it too much but I've got a sky that's dark enough now to define these areas right in here at the same time it's light enough that once I get the rest of this scene in there it's going to drop back and push back but I like what's happening there. I have a lot more interest than what I, I have up in here. But I'm using it as a design tool to bring these shapes down into here. Now, let's tip that up just slightly. Take a look at that and see where we're, where we're to. We've got this nice guy that's just coming down into this area and uh, giving us a good feeling there.